The Moral Implications of Coercion, Examining Forced Transactions In ethical discourse, discussions often center around the concept of theft, a wrongful act characterized by the unlawful acquisition of someone else's property without their consent. However, what if we introduce the element of coercion into this equation? Does the act of taking something under duress or the threat of harm constitute theft, even if the victim physically hands over the item in question? This article seeks to explore the moral implications of such transactions, specifically in scenarios where coercion is employed to secure property. The nature of coercion Coercion involves the use of force, intimidation, or threats to compel someone to act against their will. It is a tactic that strips individuals of their agency, leaving them with little to no choice but to comply with the coercer's demands. When coercion is present, the victim's consent becomes severely compromised. Coercion and Consent One of the key tenets of ethical transactions is voluntary consent. When individuals willingly exchange goods or services, the transaction is typically considered morally sound. However, when coercion enters the picture, the concept of genuine consent becomes blurred. In situations where someone is compelled to hand over their property due to the threat of harm or even death, can we truly say that their actions were freely chosen? The gun to the head scenario. Consider the hypothetical scenario where an individual is confronted with a threat, an assailant brandishing a firearm demands that they hand over $5. The victim, fearing for their life, complies and relinquishes the money. In this scenario, the victim's action is driven not by genuine consent but by the overwhelming presence of coercion. The ethical dilemma The central ethical dilemma lies in whether this act can be classified as theft. On one hand, the victim has physically handed over the money, suggesting a form of transfer. On the other hand, the victim's will has been entirely subjugated by the threat of violence, rendering their actions far from voluntary. In most ethical frameworks, theft is defined as the unlawful taking of someone's property without their consent. Coercion, it can be argued, negates this consent, transforming what might appear as a transaction into a wrongful act. Conclusion The question of whether a coerced transaction constitutes theft is a complex ethical quandary. While the victim may physically hand over their property, the presence of coercion undermines the essence of voluntary consent, the cornerstone of just and ethical interactions. In practice, societies have recognized the moral distinction between theft and actions taken under duress, often treating the latter as a separate category of crime. This recognition underscores the importance of acknowledging the nuances within ethical debates and legal systems, ensuring that justice is served while taking into account the complexities of real-world situations. Ultimately, the gun-to-the-head scenario serves as a stark reminder that genuine consent is a vital component of ethical transactions, and any compromise of that consent raises profound moral questions.